In this video, I would like to share on the phlegm suction for nasogastric patients. This video will be of a narration nature as I wish to share my experience in performing suction for my mother for the past three months. My mother has a nasogastric tube or a nose tube being placed in her and as a result of the nose tube, it has resulted in enormous mucus and phlegm buildup. So here, um, let me first explain why suction, why phlegm suction is very important. When a person has a nose tube being placed in the, uh, in the nose to help them to eat, normally it is in cases of people who develop diaphagia, they will have a lot of phlegm and mucus build up. This is what I heard. Um, it is a common thing that I heard across people who have a nose tube being, uh, being placed in them. So it is to you suction has to be uh, performed often, especially on Alzheimer patient or those who have a problem swallowing, like ALS patient who develop diaphagia, means they can't really swallow or they can't really spit out their mucus, their phlegm or their saliva. And even if they're able to spit out, right, sometimes there's um, the mucus that is formed is all very thick and um, some of them have solidified. It's hard to actually... Uh, they, if their throat muscles uh, are not strong enough, right, is and their and their reflex is not strong enough, the coughing reflex is not strong enough, they may not be able to excrete the mucus or the phlegm on their own. Therefore, we need to perform suction for them as well. But for sure, if a person have Alzheimer and you put them on nose feeding because of diaphagia you will need to perform suction because there is a... Most probably, they would not know how to swallow the phlegm or spit it out. So this, you um, you have to have a suction, a phlegm suction machine as well as an oxygen concentrator because when we perform the phlegm suction, um, the <coughs> oxygen the oxygen level in their blood will drop. So you need we need to supplement oxygen for them. Next, let us discuss when should we do phlegm suction. Phlegm suction needs to be done at least 2 hours after the, their last feed or before their meal. But if a person has a bad digestion, you may need to wait for more than 2 hours before you do the suction after their meal. How would we know that their digestion is not so good? Now, normally for the nose patient, um, nose feeding patient, we would normally do a feed every five to six hours, about four times a day. So when before each feed, you will need to use the do a syringe test to extract to see the contents in their stomach whether there are a lot of undigested food before we decide to, uh, we know whether we can feed them their next meal. If after four or five. After 5 or 6 hours, you could still see a large volume of undigested food. It indicates that the digestive system is not that good. <clears throat> so therefore, when you, do a phlegm, when you do the suction for them, if you do it like just 2 hours, you may find that when you do suction, the stomach contents also get aspirated. Means you can see that the food being aspirated. So for this type of of um, person, you need to wait longer. In the beginning, when my mother was placed on tube feeding, it takes time for a system to adjust to the new diet. And, uh, and at that point of time, she was also unwell because she was uh, from ICU and then um, she was quite critical condition when we placed her on tube feeding. So the nutrient takes time to absorb and um, nourish her body. At the beginning, digestion is not very good. So sometimes when, uh, there was a time when I performed suction even after two and a half hours from her meal. I end up aspirating some of the meal content upwards, especially when they cough and their food is not yet digested. 
But generally, if you normally do the, if they are normally ready in between five or six hours in their meal and the digestion is okay and they're relatively active, then you can do it like after two hours. Usually, suction should be done once a day at a fixed time. So, generally, I've been told that it's better to do before they sleep because a lot of this uh, phlegm, this coughing will come at night. So, about a few hours before they sleep. So, if they have their meal at 6 o'clock, then perhaps you do it at 8.30 or 9 p.m. onwards and before the, the last meal, the last sweet is being done. Now, some... You can fix the time, but there is also um, occasion whereby they may, there are times of the day where they tend to cough a lot. Or you, when you hear them cough and you check their mouth, right, and it is full of phlegm. Get a good torch light, a very, uh, very clear torch light, very bright torch light. Cover their eyes with the towel. Then you shine, you open their mouth and shine the torch light inside to see. Um, when they cough, uh, after they cough and they stop for a while, you shine the torch and see if their mouth have a lot of phlegm or saliva. And you can see that there is uh, some phlegm built up at the back of the throat, which you cannot get. Uh, you, the only way to get those out is uh, if it's in the mouth, you can still use the sterilized cotton bud to actually slowly, um, slowly take it out. But if let's say it's behind at the throat, then you can see that there's a pool of the phlegm, right? Then you have to do suction. Because if you see that there is, um, there's a, you can see outside the throat, right? Normally, from my experience, there's more of it where those things come from. So when you do suction, generally, there's a lot of phlegm that will come out. On. Um, last time I used to do it at a fixed time, about 8.30 at night. Uh, a friend will help me to, to shine the light and then we do it. But after a while, I noticed that sometimes when that, at that point, she can, my mom will cough um, like in the evening or night a bit. And you can see that her mouth has a lot of those uh, like white color mucus and all these things. And I clean it. I can see that there's a lot earlier in the evening. But when I do suction, there's less. Well, because probably she has already swallowed it. But the problem is most of the time when she swallows it, it may not, she doesn't swallow to the stomach. So she may have swallowed it like to the lung. And it will result in, if it's not being sucked out soon, right, it may, she may get a infection or pneumonia. So what I do nowadays is that I will actually, like some, like, if she cough. Like in the afternoon, um, right before her meal time, I will check her mouth. If I can see that there's a, there is like a, a pool, a small pool of build out of phlegm, right? Using the torch light, I can see it, and and that her mouth is uh, full of like uh, like secretion. Then what I'll do is I'll perform the suction before I give her her meal, right before I give her her meal. So after doing um. After doing the, this this is actually means based on how they they cough. If they, if there's a certain period of the day where the phlegm builds up is a lot, then do it during that time and has to be right before the meal. So you do the suction first, you get most of the phlegm out. Especially if you see the phlegm is like um like greenish, very light greenish color and it's thick. This indicate that there's an infection in the lungs. And also another sign to look out for is that normally if let's say they, we, because we place them in the room, it's a fixed temperature and they normally don't sweat so much. Then suddenly you start noticing that they, they sweat a lot, means the bed, uh, their pillow is wet and the back is very wet and hot. They sweat much more than normal. Indicates that they are not feeling well. You may want to get them to the hospital. But... There was a period whereby my mom has. Uh, uh, there was a period when mom was coughing, and then um, the doctor actually prescribed cough medication for her. After taking the cough medicine, uh, it's actually in tablet form. I pound it and administer in the meal based on the prescription. 
After doing that, she did not actually get better. The cough keep coming back and I know that I cannot be giving her cough medication for long term. I'm giving her Flumosil, the the one to dilute her phlegm that is given on long term, administer together uh, with the food after after breakfast. But for cough medicine, even the doctor don't advise me to do it all the time. So what I did, so she was coughing, she was not well. Then what I did is that I, I noticed that when she had a lot of phlegm, I did the phlegm suction. And there was one time, miss, I did it like twice a day, morning and then at night. And then there was one time when I do the suction in the morning, I found that there was a lot of green phlegm being sucked out green color phlegm floating on the canister because I will check after I do the suction. And then after that, she started recovering. So there are a few times when she was, I mean, I noticed that she's starting to cough more often. She's starting to cough and the phlegm is turning uh, thick greenish color. What I do is that when I can see the phlegm is there and it's before her meal time, or at least two hours after her meal time, I will do the suction. But the maximum amount of time I do the suction is the most is three times a day. Um, I'm also advised by the doctor as well to perform suction for her like before meal. When doing the suction, you have to be gentle have to be careful because uh, when you do the suction, first thing first, you have to wear a glove. If you're, especially the hand that's holding the, the suction tube, the end of the suction tube. And if you are in contact with the inside of your mouth, you have to hold, wear gloves. So that is to prevent, uh, like if your hands are not clean, you may in- cause her infection or the other way around. So check and then after that, um, and before doing, and when doing the suction also, you need to give the person oxygen. So you're on the oxygen and then you check. Uh, if you check other videos of the suction, they also will ask you to check things like blood pressure and all this uh, before doing the suction. Normally what I'll do is I will have the oxygen for her and then when I perform the suction. Initially when I perform the suction, I had to restrain her. Um, I had to restrain her her hands use because she's already on the hand mittens, and the hand mittens can have a come with a restraint. So I had to tie it to the back post. But nowadays, as I got used to doing it, and I can and I do it gently, I do not restrain her when I perform the suction. So she also don't fight back or struggle because if they fight back and struggle, and you try to get the tube in, sometimes you will end up hurting them because the tube the suction actually if you put it into the skin of the throat is very vulnerable so when you when if let's say uh, the person is fighting fighting uh struggling and your tube is inside right it may cause them to suck on the flesh instead of the phlegm and that may cause bleeding if you if you put it at the same spot long enough that's why you need to differentiate the, the different sound between what happens when the suction tube comes in contact with the skin and what happens when it comes in contact with the phlegm. You need to be able to differentiate the sound. If it comes across to the skin, it's a kind of like high pitch sound. You can test it by putting the suction in the water. When it sucks, right, there's a high pitch sound. So it is in contact with the skin. If it's to the phlegm, right, when you touch a pile of phlegm, you feel that there is like a, like a kind of like a little tension. And then as you continue to suck, it's like a slurpy sound and you can see the phlegm coming out into the tube. So when doing the suction, the guideline is not to have the tube there for more than 15 seconds. So after that, and you move it a little, a little movement up and down so that it, it doesn't go uh, to risk it going to the skin and injuring it. So uh, always minimize the injury. On uh, don't be careful because when doing the suction, 
may injure if let's say they are they are struggling so if the person tend to struggle like alzheimer patient then uh, get another person to help to restrain and you probably need help for the person to sh- help you to shine the torch to check the location so that you know where to put down because you need to uh, clean at first the mouth then um, because the back of the tongue and all this is very hard to clean using using other method but suction will be the best you wet wet the mouth and then after you put in the suction and go around the mouth then after later you you see the opening of the throat then you go in a bit um, nurses who are good at it will be able to put it down till they reach the trachea but I don't have the expertise, so I what I do is I, I put it down a little, but it's just at the top, the suction, and I perform it more often if, let's say, I notice that she has more, my mother has more phlegm. During, in between, during the suction process, always, um, if the mouth goes very dry, which they tend to be because they no longer swallow liquids much on their own, um, they don't swallow the liquid on their own anymore. You need to uh, wet their mouth. So what I'll use is uh, I will use the, the sterilized cotton bud, the same kind of cotton bud that normally um, you find that when they do the COVID test, they will put in that, that cotton bud, the sterilized one. I soak in water and then I wet her mouth. So we do the while wetting and then I'm doing the suction. So after a while, when you see that like there's no more... S- a lot of phlegm that is being sucked out. Do another examination to see uh, by shining the torch light into the mouth to see whether there is still phlegm that you can see uh, outside. If there's no no more, then um, then you can just uh, you can just store away the clean up your suction equipment product. Um, the suction. What I do is that the tube I run it in a in a glass of. Uh, Boy, clean boil water at room temperature uh, to, for it to start to clean, sort of clean the tube. Normally, I use up to three glasses to uh, I throw out the canister with the, with the phlegm and after that, I, I rinse it with the two, about two glasses of water. Two glasses of the clean water. And then the, the, the suction, the tube has to be changed um, every time you have to... Uh, the, the outer tube, the one that uh, comes with the, for the size 14 is a green tip. Uh, and please use, if the phlegm, the mucus is thick, right? Please use size 14, at least size 14. Size 12 is more for children and for those that only have, uh, have like saliva secretion without any solid. Once you have solid, size 12 is very hard to suck out. So you need to use at least size 14. And then um, there's one danger that may come with suctioning. That's why when you're doing suctioning, do your best to ensure that uh, there's always uh, people within reach if, that you can call. Because there's few times when I was doing suctioning for my mom, I think she has some kind of like solid mucus that is... Uh, at that point of time when I, was, when I was just learning and I was not doing that often... I think some of the uh, solid actually either is from managed to travel down around the trachea, trachea area. So when you're doing suctioning, when you pull, right, suddenly this solid goes up and it blocks the airway and nearly choke her. There's, this only happened, it have happened before, it's very infrequent, but it does happen. So what you need to do is when you see that and then they are struggling for breath and you can see the lips like turning blue, you quickly get them up and pack, um, do a heating on their back to try to dislodge the, the position of the, the mucus. That's why before you start the suctioning, you should have the oxygen eat, uh, at their nose already. So it's easier because once they go out breath and you start um like uh, sort of like using the palm of your hand you bend you bend curve a bit and then you start hitting the back right so that you can dislaunch the hopefully dislaunch the thing so this is uh this one immediately you have to get them up so sometimes you may need help because like for my mom she's too when she when she struggle for breath she 
her whole body tenses up. So I have to actually um, really get her up and then I have to, I need to another person to help me. And then uh, normally by patting, but it will be okay. Even though there's a risk that comes with the suctioning, it still has to be done because uh, if we don't do the suctioning for them and they're not able to uh, spit out or they're not able to swallow the mucus of lamb and the saliva on their own, it's going to, these things are going to solidify, it's going to cause an infection and it's going to probably choke them to death. So I have known of cases um, cases of people who have a nose tube place and they have a lot of saliva and they don't have dementia or Alzheimer, but they die from choking on the solid because their muscles are not strong enough to get rid of all the phlegm already. That's why it's not a matter of whether uh, whether the person... This is the kind of like, I would say, hazard that comes with nose feeding. Because it just produces uh, tons of mucus and irritation to the to the to the throat. That's why they are, that's why the secretion actually happens naturally, and it is something that we have to be vigilant and we have to always uh, be careful when it comes to suctioning. When we have to be diligent in doing suctioning for them, this is going to be so long as they have the tube in. Is something that we have to do. That's why for people who don't have Alzheimer, who uh, normally they to avoid this issue of this mucus build up, right? They will advise to put a packed tube. Means that uh, if it's going to be a long term thing that they need that they really can't swallow. Um, then to put a packed tube uh, at the stomach instead of a nose tube. But the packed tube is more of a permanent fixture and it's uh, invasive in nature. So it's not suited for an Alzheimer patient because Alzheimer patient will definitely pull out and you may re- and if they you see no tube you can take in and out, you replace it every month, the whole structure comes out. But with a packed tube, if they pull it out, it may cause uh, injury. So uh, that's why for Alzheimer, it, uh, normally the recommendation is uh, nasogastric intubation. And also for some people who are on short term, who need to put in the tube only you know, for short term, it's also nasogastric. So we need to watch out for this uh, sign as well. And then once putting on the tube also, um, the person can't really lie flat anymore. It shouldn't be lying flat anymore because uh, of the mucus build up, right? If they lie flat, when the phlegm comes out, even like to the digestive tract or somewhere, it may go to the lungs. They might choke, like suddenly they'll be sleeping and then this phlegm will go to the lung and then they will, uh, when during the breathing, right, it, they will choke. So, have to be an incline of at least 30 degrees. Uh, for those who like to slide down, especially elderly, then you have to put a wedge. The... What you can do, you need to get help to lift them up and then put the wedge at the, uh, especially during feeding time, at the wedge at the at their butt so that to prevent them from sliding. And you in, we incline the bed. Uh, incline the bed or put pillows below them. So these are what I learned. Um, there's a link in the description box where I, where I will write a post on this phlegm suction. Uh, and if there's any more updates, I will be updating the articles, uh, the article, as well as I did a series of articles on the tube feeding for diaphasia and dementia patient, which I will also include the description in the link below. So I hope that this video, this description will be helpful. I'm sorry, I don't, I'm not able to uh, give a demonstration. Because I would like to respect the privacy of my mom, and uh, when but I will do the I'm trying to do the explanation to my best of my ability, and because I cannot find videos out there that actually explain, they will teach how to do flam suction, but uh, the hazards and also the um, technique of uh, doing it um, may not be fully explained. So this is something that I would like to share based on my own personal experience. And the background noise that you hear sometimes is actually my mom talking, uh, talking uh, as she's um, as she's resting. 
like this morning itself also, I actually done the phlegm suction for her as well. Because in the morning, like when I woke up, I hear that she's cough, she cough, right? Um, I ch- actually check her mouth, her throat, put a towel on her eyes and check and notice that there's a greenish phlegm. Then I do the suction out. If I don't do it right, if they will be a bit lethargic, you'll notice that uh, with the phlegm built up, they're very lethargic and then they will look very weak. But once you do the suction, sometimes you can see that the energy comes back for them immediately. So I really hope that this video helps um, you. Um, take care of yourself as well if you are a caregiver and uh, get enough, uh, get enough uh, nutrition and do not neglect yourself. Um, it's a good job if you're caring for your loved one you're doing a wonderful job because uh, at this stage that's when they need us to care for them the most take care